Hi, welcome back to AP Daily Practice Sessions for AP World History Modern. My name is Amy Laporte Lewis, and I teach at Holy Innocence Episcopal School in Atlanta, Georgia. Go Bears! Uh, if you're following along out there today, then you probably want to access the practice multiple choice questions that we're going to be going over. You can find the link to those questions at the beginning of this video, and you can also find the link in the description in YouTube. As I said, we're going to be focusing on multiple choice today. So first, I'm going to start with giving you some general tips. Number one, answer every question. There is absolutely no penalty for guessing. So you never want to leave any of your answer choices blank. So if you find yourself running short on time as you go through the multiple choice, just bubble something in. Next, we want to be super methodical. This is the process that I use with my students. This is what I teach them to do. Step one, read the source information first. It's going to help situate you in time and space and already give you a sense of what the passage might be about. Next, you want to read the questions. A lot of times the questions will point to a specific part of the passage or a specific line or something. So it's good to know that ahead of time so that when you read the passage, you can actually focus on that particular area. Um, then you'll actually start to read the passage. If you've previewed the, the questions first, then you, have, you will get a sense of what the passage is going to be about and it will help with your reading comprehension. Once you've read the passage or examined the text, then you can go about answering all the questions. Um, some things you can use as you're trying to eliminate wrong answer choices, you can think about chronology and theme, right? If something just seems wildly out of the time period and, and not possibly accurate, then you can eliminate those answer choices right away. Also, if something seems like it's not the right theme in terms of what the question is calling for, like maybe the question asks about a cultural something and you see a political answer in there, then you can eliminate that. Always refer back to the source as you need to and to help you eliminate the incorrect answer choices. And finally, answer every question. I really mean it. Don't leave anything blank. All right, let's get into our first question set. Okay, so uh, this is a passage um, that two, we're going to see two multiple choice questions that are based on this passage. So we're going to follow the process that I just talked about. Right? Make sure we identify the source information first. There it is. So let's uh, kind of break this down. First thing, zero in on the date, 1836, okay? Now we know when we are, okay? Uh, this is a letter to a British magazine from an English merchant in China. So now we kind of know it's a communication between Britain and China originating in China in the um, kind of early to mid 1830s, right? Um, we look at the title, it's called Remarks on the Opium Trade. Now in my mind, I'm starting to put pieces together. I know this is the right time period for opium trade. I know that was a big major kind of incident between Britain and China. So I'm already starting to get a sense of what the passage is about before I even read it. The next step is to read the questions. Okay, the questions are gonna, again, help you try to understand the passage. And they're also gonna save you time because you know what you need to look for. So the first question here is, the trade described in the passage is best to seen as an early example of which of the following. So now I know the passage is going to be about trade, and I also know that I need to think about the trade in the passage as an early example of something. I need to be thinking about patterns of trade, trade relationships, and that kind of thing. What am I seeing in this passage? Second question is about um, a historian could use the trade in the passage um, as a turning point in history. So now I know for sure the passage is going to be about opium trade. Makes total sense because that was the title of the letter. Um, and, I, and I also know now I have to be thinking about how the trade in the passage might be a turning point in world history. So I have a lot of information before I've even read the text. So um, you can uh, pause and read it here on the screen or look on the handout from the link. I do want to point out one little thing um, that you're going to see quite often in AP history exams is that you'll see a vocabulary term or maybe a phrase that has this little asterisk next to it. Um, the lingo that we use is it's, it's a gloss. So the it means that they're going to give you some kind of information or define this term or phrase or maybe give you some information about an event or something like that. So always look for it and read it. So here in, in our example, um, it turns out what they've done is kind of told you what arsenic is and that it's a poisonous substance. All right, so go ahead and pause and read the passage and then we'll start tackling the questions. All right, our first question, again, it's about the trade described in the passage and how it might be an early example of something. Okay, so let's take a look at the answer choices and you can pause and read through them and see if you can figure out what the answer is and then we'll go over it. 
All right, there's nothing that immediately jumps off the page to me in these answer choices as we could eliminate it for being chronologically just way outside the time period or even thematically not appropriate, right? They all are kind of about trade and economic activity. So we're gonna to need to go through these answer choices one at a time, okay? We look at answer, a, a kind of deep inspection of answer choice A, it's about cheap consumer goods from Europe. Well, that's definitely not true for this time period. So we're gonna cross that one out, okay? Um, next, we see uh, an, a growing influence of European immigrants in China. That's also not accurate for the time period, right? 1830s, that is not happening, so B is out. Uh, C, is there um, this transition from a joint stock company controlling territory to a European country taking over directly? Well, this one is true for this time period. That's kind of what is happening. Um, states are starting to take more direct control over territories that used to be controlled by a joint stock company. But that's not what's happening in China. In fact, that never happened in China. So C is out. Well, that only leaves us with one answer choice left, and so it better be the right one. So let's make sure. Um, with D, it's about economic imperialism. When we look back at the passage to confirm, we see this second paragraph is definitely describing economic imperialism, right? this kind of economic exploitation of one country over another country's economy. So D is definitely our correct answer. All right. Moving on to the next question, right? we're looking at how the trade in the passage might be a turning point in world history. Okay, So here's our answer choices. Um, if you need to pause and read through those, do that now. All right, hopefully you're able to kind of narrow it down uh, or pick out the right answer, but we'll go over it. Um, again, there's nothing that is like egregiously outside the time period um, or even thematically not correct. So we'll go through each one, each, each answer choice one at a time. In A, um, is this passage a turning point because it's a, a shift in this historic imbalance of trade with China? Again, we, we look at that second paragraph, that's definitely what is happening and what's being described in the second paragraph. All right, but we don't want to just go for A without looking to see if there are any other options because there might be a better option. So we're just going to put a question mark for now and make sure we check out all our other answer choices. All right, in B, is this the transit? Is it a turning point because it's the transition from mercantilism to capitalism? Well, 1830s is a little late for it to be this transition away from mercantilism to capitalism. So B is out. Um, is this the first time that Europeans use forced migration, um, forced migration labor to produce crops for global distribution? No, we can think back to the early modern era and sugar plantations and the use of enslaved Africans there. So C is out. Um, and then D, is this showing industrial techniques and modern marketing? That's definitely not what the passage is about. So D is out. So we were right, it turns out that A was the correct answer. There we go. Okay, our next set of questions is gonna be based around this stimulus, which is a, a photograph here. Okay, so again, we're gonna kind of break down the information that we're seeing. Number one, check that date, 1889, late uh, 19th century. Okay, um, this is in Tahiti, that's the location. And you'll see, as I mentioned earlier with arsenic, there's a little gloss. So we wanna make sure we review that information, right? And what do they say about Tahiti? Well, they tell us it's a French colonial territory in Polynesia in the South Pacific. So that helps us locate time and place. What other information do we get? It's a French photographer. Um, we're celebrating Bastille Day. Again, there's another gloss there for us. Right? Kind of make sure that we read that information. We find out that the Bastille Day is a French national holiday um, celebrating the French Revolution. Okay. Um, and then the last thing we're going to get from this information is that this photograph was taken for publication in the French press. So this photograph is destined for France. Okay, let's preview the questions. First question, what describes the likely purpose? So now I know I'm going to need to spend a little bit more time reviewing the information about the photographer again. Like who, who is the photographer? Where is this photograph going? The second question, uh, which of the following events would be most likely to produce a similar cultural context to the one that we're seeing in the image. So that means I need to like figure out what is the cultural context of the image and then start thinking about what other situations were similar. All right, here we go. Question three, which of the following best describes the likely purpose of the photograph? So let's take a look at the information again about the author, right? It's a, or it's a French photographer. He's capturing this moment where the people in Tahiti are celebrating Bastille Day. Um, and it is intended for publication in the French press. 
So why on earth would they do this, right? Let's look at the image and break it down. First, we see a big giant French flag. Then we also see a bunch of Tahitian people who are dressed up in what looks like very European Western style clothing, okay? So let's see what our answer choices are. Again, you can pause to read through them and, and see if you can come up with the right response. In answer choice A, it's kind of zeroing in on a change in Polynesian political hierarchy and gender roles. And that's just not what we're seeing in this image at all. We, we, we know nothing about the political hierarchy, so A is out. Uh, with B, um, it's saying, you know, it's trying, it's saying that the photographer is trying to show that Tahitians were racially inferior. Well, if anything, this photograph is showing Tahitians dressed up as Europeans, so it's kind of doing the opposite, so B is out. Uh, C, are we trying to record rapidly vanishing Polynesian customs? Well, it's true that we definitely see some elements of Polynesian tradition, right? The, the kind of hats and headgear that many of the people in this photograph are wearing seem to be not European. They seem to be indigenous. Um, but we're not seeing any attempt to try to record vanishing habits. So C is out. Again, hope D is right. Let's just verify. Um, are we trying to show the civilizing effects of colonial rule and the loyalty of the subjects? Well, given the fact that we're showing a French flag and celebration of Bastille Day, that kind of checks the loyalty of the subjects part. And then they're, the fact that they're dressed up in European style clothing is definitely trying to show the civilizing effects. So D is our correct answer. Okay. Moving on to our next question, uh, we're looking for a similar cultural context, right? That's that's kind of the goal of this question. So first we got to figure out what is the cultural context of the image, right? Again, it's a French photographer in Tahiti. And again, reference back, where is Tahiti again? Oh, right, it's a colonial territory in, in Polynesia, okay? And again, I've just kind of put a box around the kind of main meat of this image here, right? This cultural context are people are dressed up looking like Europeans. These are not Europeans, but they are wearing European style clothing. So which one of our answer choices would might be a similar situation? I'll let you pause and see if you can figure it out for yourself, and then we'll go over it. Okay, right away, I'm going to eliminate Marxism in answer choice A, right? The, there's nothing about this image that screams Marxism and elimination of social class distinctions, so A is out. Um, in B, the Taiping Rebellion in China um, is more about resisting imperial control, right? That's It's a rebellion against the Qing dynasty. It's also a rebellion that is kind of founded in or based on uh, religious ideas, and that's definitely not what's happening in the image, so B is out. Uh, see the scramble for Africa. Well, we do know that Europeans use this idea of a civilizing mission pretty much everywhere they um, colonized in this in the 19th century. So this is probably our right answer. But let's just go ahead and check D just to be safe. Okay, um, unification of Germany. That's really not what's happening with this image, right? Um, Tahiti. It's not like France is trying to kind of merge with Tahiti and make it one one nation. Tahiti was definitely a colony of France, so D is out, and so C is in fact our correct answer. Okay. Uh, the final question we're going to look at um, is uh, relates to this image. So again, let's use our our kind of method to break it down. We're going to zero in on the date, 1784. Okay. Um, this is uh, in Indonesia, so that gives us the time and the location. Um, we see that it's a sketch that was um, done by a Dutch Lutheran minister that was living in Indonesia at the time. Um, and then we also want to make sure we read the caption too. Okay, we see that the sketch is going to show the sun. Let's see if we can spot the sun Johnny. Oh, there he is. Uh, and also Flora, an enslaved Indonesian household servant. Let's see if we can find her. Up oh, there she is. Um, kind of on the right at a spinning wheel. Okay, let's take a look at the question. We're just going to do one this time. In the late 19th century, which of the following would most motivate the Dutch to continue to expand their presence in Indonesia? So what I want to be thinking is, why are the Dutch in Indonesia? What makes them want to have a bigger presence in Indonesia? All right, so um, again, we're looking for motives for the Dutch to expand in Indonesia. So let's look at these answer choices and see if we can get to the right one. Pause if you need to. All right, uh, answer choice A, are they there to acquire more natural resources? Well, that sure sounds like why European nations were expanding and, and uh, their presence in colonies. So A is probably the right answer, but let's put a question there for now and make sure we go through all the other options. 
with B, the growing competition with Spanish and Portuguese empires, this is where chronology can really help you, right? Date of this question or date of this image is uh, 1784, and that's just too late for um, Spanish and Portuguese empires to be growing, right? By this point, Spanish and Portuguese empires were shrinking, so B is out. C, um, are, we, is, are we talking about the Meiji Restoration in Japan? Again, chronology can help us. This image is 1784, and the Meiji Restoration is in the 1800s, so C is out. D, is there nationalism in Indonesia? Is that, is that what's motivating the Dutch to expand? Again, chronology is going to help you here. The date is 1784. Nationalism, is, nationalism in Indonesia doesn't really come about until the 20th century. So D is out. So in fact, A was our correct answer. Thank you so much for joining me today with multiple choice practice. I hope you learned some pro tips on how to uh, take a methodical approach. And good luck on your AP exam. See you next time.